All right, uh, so let's start. We're going to be talking about our second classifier today. Last class, we talked about naive Bayes, right? And that's the classifier that basically tries to estimate probabilities for each class uh, and then picks, uh, picks the class with the maximum probability. So uh, today, we're going to talk a dif uh, about a different classifier, decision trees. Decision trees work in a very different way from naive Bayes. And uh, the best way to show how decision trees work is to actually start with an example. So suppose I have uh, the following data set. So my task uh, is to predict if a certain guy named John uh, is going to play tennis on a given day. Right. So uh, to help me with that, I've looked, I've observed John over a number of days and uh, recorded various things that I think might influence John's decision to play tennis. Right. So I looked at what kind of weather it is. Is it sunny or is it raining? Right. Uh, humidity. Is it high? Is it normal? Um, uh, is it windy? Right. Uh, and uh, whether John ended up playing on that day. So uh, that is my training set. Those are the examples that I'm going to build a classifier from. Uh, and the question is, OK, um, a, a new set of data comes in. right? So uh, on day 15, it's raining. Uh, the humidity is high. Uh, it's not very windy. So is John going to play or not? Right. And just by looking at the data, it's kind of hard to, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to decide, right? Because it's, uh, you know, some days when it's raining, John is playing. Other days, John is not playing. Uh, sometimes he plays with strong winds. Sometimes he doesn't play with strong winds and with weak winds. Right. So, um, so what do you do? Uh, how, uh, how do you predict it? And the basic idea uh, behind decision trees is to try to, at some level, understand why John plays. So uh, this is the only classifier that, that we'll cover that tries to predict John playing in this way. And uh, by understanding, I mean uh, what, the, what decision trees are going to do is they're going to take a look at each one of these attributes, the weather, the humidity, the, uh, the, the wind, and try to make the best inference possible about Assuming that it's raining, is John going to play or not? With what chance and what other factors may influence John playing if it's raining? Right. So um, in general, what the algorithm is going to look like is uh, it's going to look at the different attributes that you have in your data, uh, use those attributes to split the data into subsets. So for example, if I'm looking at, uh, if I'm looking at the outlook, Right. It could be raining, or it could be sunny, or it could be overcast. So those are three different subsets. And you will have some examples in each one of those subsets. Uh, and, if, uh, and if some subset is pure, then that's great. So if John always, for example, plays when it's rainy, uh, then we stop. Uh, otherwise, we keep going. We look at a different attribute and try to split the data further. So it's a divide and conquer algorithm of sorts. Um, um, I guess you could, not really, but you could say it that way. Uh, <clears throat> and then when we have a new data set, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, when we have a testing example for which we want to make a prediction, we're going to look at which subset that example falls into and then use the dominant class in that subset. So if, if, if this falls into a subset where uh, John always plays, then we're going to say, yes, he will play on that day. And if not, we'll say no. Uh, so, and that's at a high level. So let's look at how it operates. Uh, so suppose, suppose we take Outlook uh, as, our first, um, <clears throat> uh, as our first attribute. Right? So um, uh, here's the out Outlook attributes. There are three types of Outlook. Right? It could be sunny. Right? Uh, and if it is sunny, then these are the training examples that correspond to a sunny day. Right? So D1, D8, uh, so you can just look on the, on the previous slide and see. Right? Sunny, sunny. Sunny, sunny, right? So we just look at all the uh, we just look at all examples when it was sunny, and you and you see that uh, okay for some of them John played. In fact, two times John played, and uh, for three of them John didn't play. Okay. Now it could also be overcast, and these are the examples uh, for the overcast, and or it could be raining, raining, and these are the training examples, the training days when it was uh, raining. So, <clears throat> so uh, we look at them and start counting in this in this subset when it was overcast 
all days when it was overcast out of my training data, John ended up playing. Right? So this is what you would call a pure subset. It's a subset where you have only positive examples or only negative examples, but not a mix. Right? Um, so you have four yeses and zero noes. Uh, when it was sunny, it was two yeses and three noes. When it was raining, it was three yeses and two noes. So um, the way the algorithm is going to proceed is it's going to say, this is a pure subset. We don't need to split it any further. So uh, if it's overcast, we just know that John uh, plays tennis. Uh, but if it's sunny, uh, there's still some uncertainty. Right? So what we need to do is we need to figure out a way to split this set further so that we can get pure subsets. <clears throat> right? So uh, let's take this subset when it was sunny, uh, and let's assume that we're picking humidity as our next attribute to split on. It looks good, right? So you split on humidity, and you end up with two sets. Humidity is either high or normal. Whenever it was high, John didn't play. And when it was normal, John did play. Okay? So now we have two uh, pure subsets, and the algorithm would stop at this point because there is no, further, there is no need to divide the data further. Uh, so then you do the same thing on the rain, and let's say you just take the wind for the whim of it, right? <clears throat> so you take the wind, you break on the wind, and uh, for the wind, uh, the wind is either weak or strong, and when the wind is weak, John plays. When the wind is strong, John doesn't play. Okay. Uh, that's it. The algorithm is done, because at this point, what you've done is you've taken your training set, and you have sorted it into pure subsets based on some attribute values, right? So now uh, there is uh, there's no need to try to split it uh, any further. Good. <clears throat> so uh, the resulting decision tree from this would be something like that, right? So uh, what you do is you just replace the list of examples with the decision that your algorithm would make. So everything here uh, was negative. Everything here was positive. Question. How do we select which attribute goes next? At this point, an angel comes down and tells us. But on the, on the next slide, we'll talk about that. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so basically, when you, once you've replaced the examples with decisions, uh, this is what is called a decision tree. Right? It's basically a set of rules, or you can think of it as a formula. It's really like a logical uh, predicate, logical formula, that tells you in what cases John will play and in what cases John will not play, right? So if it's overcast, John will play, right? If it's sunny and humid, John will not play. If it's raining, and, but there's not much wind, then John will play. And uh, in all other cases, John, uh, John will not play. <coughs> okay, so uh, you get our new data example, right? So day 15, it's raining, high humidity. Uh, uh, and it's not very windy, so how do, you, how do you compute the prediction for this day? Really simple, you look at the outlook, right? And it was raining, so you're, you go down to this branch. Then you look at the wind, because that's the next attribute on this branch to look at. And the wind, in this case, was weak, so yes, John will play. So that's how decision trees work, that's how the, they compute these predictions. <clears throat> An important thing about the decision trees is uh, you don't just keep the yeses and noes. What you also keep is you keep the counts that you had in each node, right? How many positives and how many negatives you had in each, count, uh, in each node. And these positives and negatives allow you to not just output a prediction, but to also put a confidence on that prediction. Right? So, for example, uh, before I did it in any comparisons, I had nine positives and five negatives. So your confidence wouldn't be, wouldn't be very high. So uh, here I have four positives and zero uh, negatives. So your confidence would be high relative to, say, something like this right? or, or, or something like that. So you have more examples. The more examples you have in your subset, the more confident you would be about the decision that you're making.